Today's lab we'll be learning how to put a thread on a half inch rigid piece of pipe. On one side of the pipe using the electric threader, the rigid 300 that we have in the shop. And we'll be putting another thread on the other end of the pipe using the hand threader on the tripods. So the first part we're going to show you is how to uh, look for anything that has to be done before you get started for the safety of your, your well being. Before you get started, you should check your machine, make sure everything is working correctly. Make sure you have your three prong on your cord, the ground has not been broken off, and plug it into the correct receptacle. Once that's done, you should have a cutting tool for cutting the pipe, the threading tool, and the reamer, which can be in two positions handle rotate that uh, brings the tools in should be sliding very freely your switch has a four reverse and middle position and your foot pedal in the opposite should not work put it in reverse you should see your machine come on rotate clockwise in the forward position the machine will rotate counterclockwise this machine has uh, a lot of torque so you need to be careful that your hands are not anywhere that you might be in a pinch point. You'll also notice that I'm wearing uh, safety glasses. I bought myself some pair of gloves because the threaded pipe uh, creates uh, filings that could get into your skin and give you uh, metal splinters so it's a good idea to buy yourself some work gloves and of course as a requirement you must have safety shoes in the shop. The Close up of the machine you'll see that it's called the Rigid 300. It's got jaws on both sides and by rotating this one clockwise it opens up the jaw and counterclockwise closes. The opposite happens on this side by rotating this towards you it opens up and that way closes it. This is where your pipe will go so if we take our pipe. You're going to need a piece of pipe at least longer than 18 inches to do your project because the actual pipe required is 18 inches long. If you have a short piece like this, you can uh, measure up 18 inches, work it on your pipe, cut it with a hacksaw, which is a little hard to do with a hacksaw rigid pipe, or you can find a longer piece of pipe like we have here and mark up 18 inches on that. The actual size of rigid pipe comes in 10 foot lengths, so if you start with a full length, you can put the pipe inside your threader Run it through, get your marker, your Sharpie marker. And measure 18 inches. Once you've marked 18 inches with your measure tape, I would suggest that you can have a habit of marking it all the way around your pipe. The same thing you'll be doing with EMT when you're using your bender. Once you got your mark, you basically set it up in between this area here and lock the pipe in place, forwards and backwards. So both sides are going to be locked so that the pipe is firm. You'll see a close-up of this showing that the pipe is tight by giving it a couple of joints of your hand in the counterclockwise will lock it into position. And the pipe coming through on the other end is also locked into with the jaws. And this is timed in the clockwise position. This here is your cutting tool for cutting the pipe. You're going to back this off so that it goes over the pipe. This is your threading tool and this is your reaming tool. Down below is your bucket that has oil in it that you were required to put on the thread as it's threading to keep it from burning out the threads on the uh, on the dies. So you'll notice you have this bucket here this is where the when you use the oil the filings and the oil will drip into this bucket. You should empty out any filings or pieces of uh, conduit that are in here into a scrap bucket uh, before you start, you should also check if you have enough oil in your system. 
present this one here is low on oil and I'll zoom in and show you that we need to add oil on this. As you can see, you can see the feeder spout where the oil is sucked up by the hose is exposed which means that we are at the minimum level for oil. It is recommended that we would add oil at this point. So we can get our rigid oil and add some oil so that we can top it up. Once you have enough oil there that it covers the spout, that should be plenty of oil for now. One. This will so once you've filled up your bucket with oil, place the strainer back in place. As you can see, it's got holes in it. So what happens is the oil drips through, it catches the filings, and lets the oil go into the bottom, and you can keep recycling it and using it. The oil is basically fed by a pumping action by the trigger. So during our demonstration, you'll be seeing how I'm loading up the oil and spraying it on the die as it's being used. Okay. So once we finish filling up our bucket or checking that we have enough oil, we're going to bring our handy uh, oil pump. It's got a hook on it, so it easily hooks on to the edge here. Just by pumping that, you'll see you'll get oil out of it, and that's what we'll be using it for. So for now, we'll just place it on there. So we're ready to cut the pipe. It's tight into the bender, into the uh, threader. We have our switch in the forward position. I'm going to come down and load up my cutting tool and line it up with the mark on my pipe so that I can cut it off. Now we're ready to uh, cut our pipe. As you can see, I'm focusing on the mark that we made, which makes our pipe 18 inches long. So we're going to put our cutting tool on there and back it off. So now that we have our mark, I'm going to bring my tool in. I'm going to open up the jaw so that the two wheels on this side sit on the edge of the pipe and slowly line up the cutting wheel which is right there with the line. Once it's lined up I'll start to tighten up the tool. I verify that I'm in the correct location and I'll quickly zoom in for you so you can see that. As you can see from this close-up the cutting wheel on the right is basically lined up with the red line that we are going to do the cut on. Now we're ready to cut. Our cutting wheel is lined up with our line. We're going to go forward and as I go forward I'm going to turn this wheel to tighten therefore start the cutting process of the pipe. As it turns you should give it shuffle turn. You will continue to turn this, eventually the pipe will cut off and drop off or you can grab it, you can see it getting wobbly. This will happen very shortly. So the pipe's been cut off. This is the 18 inch piece of pipe that we want. So I'm going to replace, take this one out and put it into the jaws and we can start the threading process. One. So once again, I'm going to loosen this now. So I loosen it by spinning it this way. The other side, take the pipe out from the front or from the back. It doesn't matter. We can keep this for another project or make another 18-inch piece of pipe for it for someone else. We're going to go back to our original piece of pipe that we measured 18 inches. Put it into the, the threader. And I'm going to line it up so that the back end of the pipe is flush with the jaws. The reason this is is because I need to leave so much in the front so that we can actually bring the threader in. So I'll tighten that up and this should give me enough th thread and travel in my, in my device so that I can thread it. As you can see this moves forward. I must have at least two fingers for the thread to be put onto the pipe. So as you can see from the side view, you basically have a little more than two fingers of pipe sticking out from the front. At the back, it's basically almost flush with the jaws. So that 18 inch piece of pipe is the shortest we can go so that the jaws grab at the front and at the One. back of the machine. The die we're using in the shop is set up to handle uh, half inch pipe. 
So you'll notice the opening here is set up for half inch pipe, but it can be designed to handle other sizes of pipe by adjusting this lever here. You can set it for other sizes such as uh, such as three quarter and that's the biggest you can get on this one. You can go smaller in case you're doing three eighths pipe, but we don't use three eighths pipe in our trade, but uh, the other trades do. So this die is basically good for half inch and three quarter. If you change the dies internally, you could set it up for two inch, inch and a half, and inch and a quarter and one inch pipe, but you would have to change these, these dies. So for today, we're gonna set it up for half inch pipe, so you make sure that you line up the one. markings here. As you can see, I've zoomed in so you can see that there are some markings on here. You line up the two marks on the handle with the markings on the, the die and lock it in place so that it doesn't move. One. Now that we've got our die set up for half inch, I also want to point out when the pipe is going into and threading, you must go only a certain distance to meet the requirements of code for how many threads we need to have on the pipe. If you have too many threads, you will be out of code. The threads need to be around between 16 to 19 millimeters of thread from the edge of the pipe. I've zoomed in on the pipe and the cutting dies. The distance you need to travel is basically the edge of your pipe must be on the last cutting die. So basically if I were to move this a little further, you would stop right about there or less. You can go between 16.9 millimeters and 19 millimeters is what the code requirements. So stopping before that point would be okay. Going past that point you would have too many threads. So you don't want too many threads you wouldn't be into code. All right because you're not allowed to have a running thread. So when doing this Keep in mind that once you see the last thread disappear, that's when you should st open up the release so it doesn't thread the pipe any further and back out the uh, die. Now that we discuss how far the die has to travel when you're threading it, we are ready to start. Your handle here on this machine basically moves the die in and out. Once it's started threading on the pipe in the four position, the actual die will actually pull the machine in by itself, you don't have to force it. So the only time you need a little bit of force is at the beginning to start the thread, and if it's turning into the correct position, it will actually draw the unit forward by itself. All right, so we're ready to go. We're gonna push that down. Once again, we're gonna have our safety glasses on. You might have some gloves or safety shoes, because you never know what might break or fly your eyes, so I wanna make sure you have your glasses on. We close the die by pushing that then handle down. Make sure we're in the forward position and we're ready to go. We have to mention we're going to get our oil ready because once it starts you want to apply oil. Be careful that if you're applying oil from the front or the back, if you're going in between the two, that this is rotating, don't get caught. So it's always better to apply the oil from the front. So we turn it on and we'll start. The camera's been repositioned so you can get a better view on how the threading is done. So once again, we turn on the machine. And we'll start applying oil. You'll notice as the machine's threading, you'll see some of the filings being cut off by the dies. That's normal and it's supposed to happen. So you keep applying oil as that's happening. All right, I reached that mar magic spot where I want to stop. Looks like I might have actually gone a little too far. Once again, it's safer to be a little shorter and you can always go forward if you've gone too far and then you basically ruined your pipe. So I'll demonstrate that one more time with the other end of the pipe. We take our die, bring it down. We close the handle so that the die is in the closed position. We put it in forward and when we reach where we want to go, we actually want to lift up this handle as the machine is turning. This will prevent us getting any burrs on the pipe. If you lift the handle once the machine has stopped, it'll leave a line of burrs on the threads and we don't want that. So here we go, once again.
You've noticed that both my hands are free because now the die is, is cut into place and is pulling it by itself. And there you go, our die has been done. So we have a thread. Looks like pretty good. Once we remove it, uh, we'll take the oil out. But before removing it, we have to do one more thing. We actually now have to take our deburring tool, swing it down, bring it forward, and in the forward position, you want to deburr the pipe to take the burrs that were created inside. The reason we do this is when we run wires inside here, we don't want the sharp edges to cut our wires, so we have to deburr the pipe. So once again, we turn it on. This time we actually apply pressure with the handle so that you're actually uh, cutting into the tool and removing the burrs. Once that's done, you can wipe the pipe clean, loosen off the grip on the front and the back. You can remove the pipe from the front or from the back, either one is okay. But once you remove it, remove it level and tip it forward. This will allow any oil that might be caught inside the pipe to come out and any filings. If everything is done correctly, we should have a pretty smooth surface on the inside. You can quickly feel with your finger and up a lot of pressure to make sure you have no burrs. If you do, you should get a round file and remove those burrs or get a hand reamer and ream a little more. So there's our, our rigid pipe with threads on it. So now that we have our thread, according to table 40, the length of this thread has to be a certain distance. I think minimum is 16 and the maximum is 19.8. So check your table 40 for the correct length. I will be checking your length to make sure you have are within that tolerance. Fine. So that is our rigid half inch pipe threading lap that we uh, performed today. So you'll be doing one side of an 18 inch piece of pipe on the electric rigid 300 threader. Once you've completed that, you will move on to the tripods and use the hand threader and that will be our next video. One. Once you've completed your thread on the electric uh, threader, you should be cleaning up after yourself. Take your tools, any loose pieces of pipe or threads inside the bucket should be emptied out into the scrap bin and make sure you don't have any oil on the floor so that no one would slip and get hurt. So it's your responsibility to clean up after your work area.